Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today we're back in the shop and we're going to be making a knife out of an old circular saw blade. Uh, this is just a really fun project and it's a great way to start making knives. This is the way I started when I first started about 10 or 15 years ago making knives. I would you know, take an old circular saw blade, cut out the shape of a knife, put a handle on it, sharpen it up with a file. And the nice thing about this is that these are already pre-hardened and tempered, so you don't have to worry about doing any of the temping and the heat treating process. Um, they're not the greatest knives in the world. They don't hold an edge forever, but they do sharpen up really easily and they're just fun to make. So we're gonna start one of these today and I'm gonna do a little bit, um, just a little bit of different design. I'm gonna put a bottle opener on the back of the blade on the spine just to try something new. So. We're gonna do that. First thing I wanna do though is do a little bit of design work, come up with a good blade shape and style. I was just kind of thinking about some of the ideas and some of my drawings here that I was doing. And when I kind of got to this last one, this uh, use the French curve to draw the belly of the blade here. And once I kind of got it shaped, it started to remind me of what kind of a utility kitchen knife would might look like, um, which I thought would actually be a really good versatile use for this knife, having the bottle opener being kind of like a, a food prep knife and a, you know, kind of a general camp knife, it would be kind of nice. I think it's gonna be a really good all round knife. I like the design and I like the way it turned out. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start up. Go ahead with that one. I'm just gonna draw out my outer edge of this blank that I'm using. Uh, my blade is gonna be an inch and a quarter wide. So I'll just go out to an inch and a half so I know I have plenty of material. Cut this out first and then we'll shape down from there. Funny thing about keeping these uh, knife drawings in the sketchbook is that I always end up having the design that I like the most missing and I can't find it. So as a knife maker, I should be keeping my templates and keeping the knives that I like, but I have a lot of sketchbooks like this that have knife drawings and then one nice one that I really like end up cutting it out.
So I'm setting up my grinder jig to be able to shape the outside of my knives. This works really well and I've used it in a bunch of my other videos. And I just was reminded about this great comment from Leatherface711. He suggested that I should actually cut a hole in the side of the box so I can reach the on off switch from the outside. So I don't cut off my fingers trying to put this thing in and out while it's moving, which I think is hilarious and what a great idea. So thanks again for that comment, Leatherface711. with the grinder in the grinder jig, which works really well. Um, grind down to the outer edge of my marker line. So now I'm gonna move to the four x 36 to finish up and do the fine shaping to the final dimensions. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut the hole for the bottle opener. And this hole is gonna be a quarter inch wide. Uh, it's gonna be a half inch up from the handle. And then it's gonna be a quarter of an inch down from the spine, which will then put an eighth of an inch um, of the little knob that's gonna bite in when you open up the bottle opener. So we just gonna drill the hole, it's a quarter of an inch. And then I'll cut straight down from the spine and then at an angle from the spine as well, and that'll make the shape of a bottle opener. The next thing I'm going to do is start to file in the bevels and um, as a knife maker now I usually will grind them in and I have jigs and all to make sure my grinds are really nice but I'm going to show you the process that I would have done when I first started making and actually filing my bevels by hand and so the easiest way to make sure you're as accurate as possible is to mark off your actual edge with a black marker and scribe that so you know where your center line is as well as your bevels so we can do the same thing mark the edge the side of the blade with a marker and scribe it so we have a really nice clean line to follow
clamp on just a block of wood, which will act as a guide for my file for when I'm doing my plunge line. So it'll keep a clean plunge line here. Works pretty well. So we're gonna give her a try. See how that works, should work really well. Oh yeah, way better. So I'm just finishing up the bevels now. And because I'm not doing any heat treating, I'm going pretty much all the way down to the edge. I'm just feeling for the burr on the other side. It's there. Um, I'm gonna wait until the very end to do all the finish sharpening. But at this point, I wanna get it pretty close before I move into hand sanding. And before I do the hand sanding, I am going to file the choil in right at the edge of the blade, between the blade and my plunge lines to give you that kind of, that spot that'll make it a little easier to file. So you want to file all the way up or sharpen the blade all the way up to the plunge lines. I just finished taking this side up to 600 grit, sanding it smooth, trying to straighten, line up all my sand, my sanding lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over now to the other side, which I finished up to 220 grit, but now I'm gonna take that up to the 320 and then the 600 to finish it off as well. I need four and a half inches for my handle. So I'm gonna mark that first. And then I need to split this piece down the middle for my scale. So this is seven eighths, 
So half of that is three and a half eighths. And then I'll set that on my marking gauge and run that line all the way down. So I'm just gonna use some sandpaper now. Um, and I tape this down to a stone tile. Uh, this is a really cheap tile, but it works as a surface plate. It's not like a really nice surfacing plate, but this works really well. It's flat and it's smooth, so it works well for uh, sanding this handle scales. I'm just gonna make some marks. So I have four and a half, which is here, this is the general shape of the front of my handle scale. And then two and a quarter is halfway up the handle. So that'll be my center pin. And I want to go about a half an inch or so from each end. So I'll mark here and then a half an inch from the end, which is here. So as I'm looking at this, I'm kind of just kind of thinking about this, how they're going to turn out. And right now with a half inch, uh, the two end ones, the middle one's fine because the palm swell in the middle is wider, but the end ones are a little closer down to where your fingers will wrap around rather than up to the spine. So I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to have to make just little adjustments to them. I'll move them up just a smidge. Try to get them closer to the center and probably bring this one up a little bit too so that way all three of them are still in line. I just drilled all three of my holes. These are my main holes that I'll be using for my brass pins, and these are all 1 8 inch thick. Uh, I'm gonna switch to an 11 30, uh, 1364th bit now, and actually go back and drill a bunch more holes in the handle, which will just add more surface area, and it'll give the epoxy something to go through and hold everything together when I glue it all up. So it'll just be a stronger handle, be able to hold a lot tighter. So next thing we're gonna do is we need to drill the holes out in the scales to match the handle. 
Um, and the best process for doing that is kind of a process. So you have to think about it in an order of operations. First thing you want to do is take your handle, one scale, and your knife, and you want to kind of clamp them together, and you're going to drill out your very first hole. So one of your three holes, depending on how many holes you have. Drill out one, and then you take that scale and one of your pins that's going to hold it together later, and you run your pin through the handle and through the knife, so that way that pin is going to stay in that place. Then with that pin into place, you drill out your second hole through the handle, that's existing hole, and through the scale. Then you run your second pin into that hole. So now you have two holes drilled through one scale and through your, through your knife, and you put your pins that you're going to use through those holes. That way they're not going to move and then they're going to match up later. Then with those two pins in place, then you drill out your third hole. And, and then you follow that same process with your second scale. Um, what you want to do for your second scale is you clamp it on where you want it, drill your first hole, so then you have your first hole drilled, run your pin through, and then you take your first and your second scale, put them together and run two pins through, and you drill through the holes of your first scale down through everything. That way you know that the holes in both scales are going to line up perfectly. Um, when you're actually doing your final glue up, setting everything together. So just the process of kind of knowing what to drill so that way everything lines up later using as much of your existing holes as possible. So just putting both scales back together with the rivets and then I can do all my shaping now on the front edge. I'll trim this off and shape it the way I want it and that way I know they're going to line up perfectly the same the way they're going to go when I glue them back together, put the pins through. So I'm just going to take both of these surfaces, the front edge and both of my tapers to 360 grit. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit them with the 220 and then I'll hit them with 360, which is what I'll finish off my whole handle from. I'm going to clean everything up with mineral spirits so that way there's no dust and no oil left on from any of the processes and then we'll get ready for the glue up. Use my two-part epoxy. This is a 30-minute epoxy, which gives me plenty of time to mix it up and apply it. It's a hardener and a resin, so you just mix it one-to-one. -one.
tape this up loosely around the handle so that way I have, um, that way I can protect the, the clamps from getting too much epoxy on them. And obviously this will all come off. I just cleaned up all, squeeze out from the front of the handle and have all my clamps on, everything's ready to go. So now we're just gonna go ahead and let this set up for 24 hours. We'll come back and start shaping the handle. All right, so we're back. We've had some time for it to sit. It's actually been two days, so let this sit for that amount of time. Should be nicely set up. We'll go ahead and take it apart and take a look at it. Looking over, it looks really good. I have nice squeeze out all the way around with the epoxy. So I know that it's, you know, there are no gaps in the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess pins and then start shaping the handle. So I finished shaping the handle um, to the tang all the way around. So I have my general shape down now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark off where I want my handle shape to be. And I wanna make this in a Coke bottle shape. So it's gonna be narrow at the, uh, the blade. It's gonna go the widest part right in the middle of the handle, which is two and three sixteenths. And then it'll taper down and back out to the end. And that's your kind of that traditional bushcrafting Coke bottle shape handle.
All right, guys, so just finishing up now with the 600 grit sandpaper. I started on the belt sander with an 80 grit and then moved to hand sanding with 100, 220, uh, 360, and then 600 to finish it off just to get a real nice smooth finish. I've also been really careful to make sure I'm sanding in the same direction as the tang and the grain so that way I get even scratches as well on the tang throughout the grits of sandpaper. So we're just finished up now, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out, take the tape off, and finish the blade. I'm gonna do my final sharpening now. Everything's ready, so I'm gonna do it on my, uh, my belt grinder with a belt that's turned backwards. <laughs> Try again. This is a belt turned backwards, and I just use the back of it. Some polishing compound works perfectly as a strop. All right, guys, we're all finished up, turned out really well, sharpened up, cleaned up, oiled. I just love this. I mean, the handle's beautiful. It turned out really nicely. I love this wood, and I just got a really nice, clean glue up. Really happy with this. So last thing we're going to do now is just give it a test, make sure it works the way it's supposed to. So she's nice and sharp, so now we're just gonna make sure she serves her other purpose, which is opening beers up. Works perfectly. Uh, this has been great, guys. We really enjoyed making this video and I really enjoyed this channel so far and putting out videos for you. This year, 2019, we're really trying to kind of amp up our game and do a lot more videos. We're going to try to at least try to get one once a week, maybe. Thinking about probably Sunday afternoons, putting them out. Um, if that's something you would think would work really well, if there's a day of the week you think works better, just drop us a line in the comment. We'd like to kind of find out what you guys think about that. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Keep sharing, because those of you who are sharing our videos, you're really helping us to build our subscribership and really get out and you know show the YouTube community what we're doing and just making stuff, really having fun and you know maybe teaching a little bit and showing you guys some of the tricks that I do. So please follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. I really try to put up a lot of stuff there at The Art of Craftsmanship all the pictures of things that I do in the shop and also sneak peeks of our new videos. So you'll be able to see kind of what's coming up, have a little, you know, jump ahead and know what's coming up in the next week's video. So um, we hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you guys on the next one.